Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass Fishing. Today, we're gonna answer some more of subscriber questions, but we're gonna focus on Christy questions. So, Christy, oh, Listen, hey, there she is. Move your cup holder. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> All right, so listen, in uh, one of our last videos, I had Christy ask me questions out of the community. Actually, it was kind of impromptu. <laughs> I asked her if she would come here and watch me answer videos, questions on video, so that I made sure that I covered it for somebody that I didn't really it was know so a lot. I learned things. So that I didn't really, yeah, and also so that I didn't have to tell her the same things that I already tell all you guys. Sometimes she asked me questions and I go, do hey, you know I wrote, I did like a video about that, right? She's like, I don't watch your videos. So anyway, we're going to try to get her to watch the videos. But more importantly, I've got her engaged in the community tab where she is um, taking some of the questions and making sure that I answer the ones that, you know, you guys want to have answers to. So we're picking back up. Uh, I'll link up the last video in the description box so you can go back and check that one out. But uh, let's roll with some subscriber questions from the community tab. What you got? So this is one of my favorite ones, um, and I had to learn this myself. This is from Big Red Bass, and he said, I've mostly been a bank fisherman. What's the best way to set the hook in a kayak? All oh right. my. So listen, guys, <laughs> I promise you that I will redo this video in the summertime, or I'll redo this video the next time we're actually filming, where I get drone shots, over the shoulder shots with the with the POV camera, um, and I will explain this more in depth, and I'll kind of show you some of the angles. But let me but tell you. Let me tell you, <laughs> okay? I almost assumed, I, I always assume certain things are intuitive because they are for me because I've been doing this as long as I have. But when Christy and I first started dating, and I took her on the first couple of kayak trips, I took her to some Gucci spots, right? I wanted her to be spoiled. I wanted her to set the hook on some big fish. And she set the hook on a big fish and it starts coming and she's trying to reel and catch up to it and it jumps and throws the hook. Now there's a reason for that. The fish was coming at her, she was going at it, the, the convergence was so fast, she didn't know how to keep up with it. I probably had her the wrong rod, it wasn't, you know, uh, moderate action enough to keep the fish pinned and it threw the hook. And so she went from, oh my God, to, oh, and I think she <laughs> actually had a tear because it was a big dang fish, it's probably eight pounds or better. But, but he... literally... The day before that, <laughs> we were fishing, and I, I had scouted these bass from a bluff, and I saw them spawning on this bank. And I said, listen, baby, I am going to put you on the biggest fish you will ever catch. I'm going to video it from the cliff. You're going to go over there and launch. So I took her over there, and I launched her, and then I drove back around, and I hiked up to this cliff. And I called her in and I said, come down that opposite shoreline and then the fish is going to be right here and I'm going to tell you where to cast. And when this fish eats, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be perfect. I had the camera, I had the polarizer filter on. You can see the fish. You can see Christy. I'm up on the hill. All right, baby, right there. She cast out. I'm like, okay, so you cast about three o'clock. Cast more like one o'clock and maybe 10 feet further. If you can, throw it up and hit the bank and just jiggle it off and when it falls in the water, you'll be money. And I So she it. makes the perfect cast. <laughs> It hits the side of this little bluff wall. She jiggles it, it falls in the water. She makes two little twitches on it. I'm like, stop, stop. She stops. She's perfectly <laughs> on point, paying attention. The lure falls down into the sand spot. I said, drag it, don't jerk it, just barely drag it. In fact, grab your line and pull it. She grabs the line, she pulls it. This female bass swims over. Whoop. I'm like, she's got it, set the hook. And she said, uh-huh. And I'm reeling. I said, I'm just reeling. She's reeling. The bass is swimming out to deep water like they, when they grab it off the bed, a lot of times they take it away from the bed. I said, set the hook. She said, yes, okay, okay. I said, no, no, set the hook. And she said, huh? And she looked at me on the cliff and I said, I'm, I'm not looking at her, but I can see her when I watch the video back, she's looking at me and I'm like watching this bass swim away with this lure and I'm like, set the hook. And she reels up, she starts reeling faster because she doesn't know what I mean. And the fish drops it because she, he feel, she feels her before she felt her. The fish felt her before she felt the fish and it dropped it. And I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? You literally just had the biggest fish you'll probably catch in 10 years on your line and you didn't set the hook. She's like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> so you just assume certain things when you've been fishing for you a long time. You should never assume when that you go certain fishing people with me. Think. <laughs> so we, we kind of went around our elbow to get to our backsides <laughs> to make this point. Setting the hook in a kayak is not intuitive because I can tell you that I see 
early inexperienced anglers all the way up to some of the top anglers in the country doing something that I think is the number one mistake that you can make, especially on bigger fish. And that is, you see a spot, and I'll even see guys adjust their kayak. They paddle around, line their kayak up, and they make a cast. And they're fishing, fishing, fishing. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I'm pretty dang good at fighting fish, and I do this a lot on video because it allows me to get the jump right off the nose. But I'm gonna tell you how you should do it, and then I'm gonna tell you that a lot of times when I do it, I've got my power pole down, so it's gonna keep from happening what I'm talking about, okay? And that is, you should never set the hook if you can avoid it with your line straight off the nose of your kayak. Because what happens is you set the hook, it pulls you towards the fish, the fish starts coming to you, you're converging on each other, and even with a high speed reel, you end up getting up here, which is what she did that day. She got up here, again, what I call against the wall. She's got nowhere to go. The fish jumps, the rod straightens out, the fish uses the weight of the lure to shake its head. It's advantage fish, they throw the lure, they get away, you get a heartbreak, and your day is different. The other problem is it pulls you into the spot. So now if there were three or four or five bass there, you're now being pulled into the spot. So what you should do is at a very minimum, have your kayak offset to 45 degrees and cast over, okay? And make your presentation. It's easier to make the presentation. It gives you more range for the hook set and it even gives you more room to come back to the fish with your torso instead of trying to do it with your arms. So always offset, okay? Always point your kayak away especially with docks or, or, or cover or structure that you don't want to be pulled into because if I got my kayak angled away and I set the hook, it's actually going to make my kayak go away. If you put a little butt cheek opposite direction, it'll turn your kayak away from the cover even when, and then the fish comes out and then it's advantage you. So never point your kayak directly at what you're setting the hook on. You can if you're anchored or if you have a power pole, but if you're anchored from the front, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to set the hook and it's going to bring you forward and then it's going to spin the kayak. It's going to be advantage fish. So that point was illustrated on the day that she didn't know how to set the hook. And I know it made how me, now. It made me understand that <laughs> just certain things are just not intuitive. So don't point your kayak directly at a fish when you set the hook. Um, one thing that I can tell you that I'm a big fan of, and I'm so lucky and so fortunate that I grew up this way, is I grew up, I'm left-handed. I grew up in a right-handed world. So everything that I had was right-handed. So I had to learn everything right-handed, but I'm left-handed. So when I started fishing, I started casting with both hands. I would cast back cast left-handed, I would cast forward cast left-handed, I'd cast overcast, overhand cast, I'd cast right-handed, I'd cast, you know, back cast, overcast. So I learned how to cast both hands in both directions. And then when I became a fly fisherman and I really wanted to be effective at it, and when I became a teacher of fly casting lessons, I had to learn how to fly cast with both hands because it's difficult to teach someone how to cast if you're showing them with the wrong hand. So when I taught a lesson to someone left-handed, I had to show them left-handed. When I taught a casting lesson to somebody right-handed, I had to show them right-handed. I cannot imagine not being able to cast with both hands. And so Christy gets frustrated sometimes because I say, hey, stay right, right here by me. And I give her certain rods and I put her in certain positions and I'll say, cast over there. And she's like, I don't wanna cast over there. Or she'll stand up and when she stands up, she's able to turn her body and make the cast. <laughs> What she doesn't understand is that I'm trying to get her from the beginning and make her learn to cast in every direction with both hands because it's gonna pay dividends over the long run. So we had this conversation off camera before and Christy said, you know what I think people should do is every day they should wait to the end of the trip and they should cast for 15 minutes or I 20 minutes. I say every day. I said every day you should practice. 15 or 20 minutes with the wrong every hand. Every time you're on the water, you should practice. Let me tell you what the problem with that the is. The problem with that is, is the same problem you run into when you try fishing a lure that doesn't work or you don't have confidence in when you're not catching them. So you got a lure that you don't have confidence in and you're not catching any fish. You say, well, I might as well try this lure. And then you don't catch any fish. And then now you have even less confidence in that lure. So you're saying to yourself, shoot, I'm never gonna try that lure again. What you need to do is try that lure when you're catching them on something else. So here's the problem with only practicing the last 15 minutes of the day. You're not building muscle memory. You're not making that the way that you fish. You're making it the other way that you fish. So I read an article a long time ago about Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was going for his like first Mr. Olympia. He had done some contest and the commentators commented on how um, small his calves were. So Arnold Schwarzenegger took scissors and cut the calves out of his jeans, cut the calves out of his workout pants, 
and he basically forced himself to see his calves. He forced himself to focus on his weakness, and then he worked on his calves every time he went to the gym. He focused on growing his weakest point. He focused on growing that one thing that was the chink in his armor. So if you want to go out and build confidence in a particular presentation, don't take anything else. If you want to go out and get better at a particular type of casting, only cast that way. So go out on a practice day, and if you're right-handed, cast left-handed all day long. Go out on a day of fun fishing and cast left-handed all day long. Put yourself in positions where you have to cast with the wrong hand. Because I see guys all the time spot a fish, and it's like right there, but they're right-handed, so they, they can't cast over there, or they can't, so they'll turn their kayak all the way around. By the time they turn their kayak around where they can make the cast, they've spooked the fish, they've made the fish aware that it's there, now the fish has locked jaw, or the fish is gone. So opportunistic things that present themselves demand that you have the ability to present a cast anywhere around you, 360 degrees, boom, 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 accurately. So practice it at home. Get out in the yard and only cast with your wrong hand. Get in your garage and only cast with your wrong hand. But don't just practice for the sake of practicing. Practice in the kayak. Practice out on the water with that wrong hand, that non-dominant hand, and make it the way that you do it. It's kind of like the Ricky Bobby. You know what I'm saying? When he put him in the car with the cougar and he put that thing over his head and he made him drive blindfolded. You know, try that approach. Become an ambidextrous angler learn to cast with both hands, you'll catch more fish, you'll have less frustration, and I think it's like guys that bat from both sides of the plate. Being able to do something with the opposite hand makes you better at your primary hand, it makes you better at your primary in your dominant way of fishing. So I'm a big fan of ambidextrous fishing. Get out there and practice it, force yourself to get better, and uh, yeah, and you'll be a better angler and you'll have more success and you'll be less frustrated. Less frustration, leads to less mental frustration. It leads to more confidence and more confidence leads to more catches. So we're gonna end this video with that guys. We got a lot of ground to cover, but we wanna keep these things, you know, short enough that you can watch them on a lunch break and short enough that you can, you know, get a lot out of them without being information overloaded. Um, I'm gonna keep this beautiful lady right here with me. We're gonna roll through a few more questions, but you're gonna have to come back to the next video to see that. So thanks for all your support. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.